Hello and welcome back to my six month classic car project that I bought in January. It's November now. Today you join me from behind the wheel, quite literally, of the Peugeot 205 to discuss everything that's gone wrong. You've seen the damage, you've seen the potential, now let's find out just exactly what problems we've got because I don't know about 99 problems, I've got 205 problems. Much like a nervous talent show contestant awaiting their judgement from Simon, Sharon and Louis, the 205 is here at a secret location waiting to receive the judgement, not from them, but from Alan the mechanic, who will ultimately be the one who decides when this car gets sent home. So let's start from the beginning then. What exactly has went wrong on this 205? Well, not long into ownership, uh, the 205 began to have a loss of power. So if we were going around a tight corner, the engine would just really lose power and you'd have to put your foot down to gather momentum again and uh, almost like uh, setting off at traffic lights and things like that uh, again. Uh, they'd just put your foot down and there'd be nothing and it can be quite scary really and I think this really was the final straw I used the 205 and I uh, come back from a journey and started the car and well the car wouldn't start it wouldn't even click over it was like the battery was dead even though the battery wasn't dead so that turned out to be the air lead which I haven't got done yet but the whole fuel thing where like it was almost like no fuel was getting through that I feared was a big job. So the car went to Double S Motors in Liverpool, a Citroen specialist independent for over 30 years. And they looked at the car and they said, we can't find a thing wrong with it, but it could do with a big service. So off it went for a service. Uh, and when it came out, the car drove brilliantly, perfectly, as good as new. Uh, but obviously I had to watch out for the air fleet being dodgy. Fast forward to April then and I was insured on the 205. This was the sort of bit where I thought, well, I'll enjoy this car for a little bit. Um, and then I'll sort of make the videos and sell it on and obviously do the work that needs doing. Um, so I was driving the car to work and back once or twice a week just to give it a little run out. But that was until the exhaust broke in two like my heart. Poor car. Now, of course, when you buy an old car and even if you decide to run it for a bit, then you're gonna have to expect that these sort of things, sort of unexpected costs and issues do occur. So with the whole exhaust thing, I kind of had to bite the bullet and sort of just say, I'm gonna have to do it. But sourcing an exhaust for the Peugeot 205, well, a big job broke out, not just in my underpants, but in searching for an exhaust. Oh, hello, I was wondering if you could help me. Um, I've got a Peugeot 205 here on a, an NREG. Could I just check the price and availability of a part, please? Pe Peugeot 205. N, N for ninjas. No, for, for ninjas. Oh, hello, love, so sorry to trouble you. Uh, I've got a Peugeot 205 here on a, an NREG. Hello? No, no, it, it's not a four-wheel drive, it's, it's, it's a Peugeot 205. N431. Okay, no problem at all, I'll keep looking. Ta-ra, ta-ra. Managed to source the only 205 exhaust pretty much in the country. If you're not yet feeling sorry for me, then there's more. On the same week that my Peugeot's exhaust split in two, my Saxo's exhaust split in two. This kind passerby decided the best idea was to try and rip the exhaust off, but he couldn't, so then he went home. So, managed to tie the exhaust on with a fucking USB cable. This is just fucking boss. And on the same journey that my exhaust on the Peugeot split into, the car started overheating and misfiring, and I just about nursed it into work. So what went wrong? Well, reassuringly, Alan the mechanic said that he thinks there's a massive blockage in my engine, uh, which really has reassured me. Um, and as well as that, the radiator was, you know, absolutely ruined. I looked into getting it refurbished, but it was just as cheap and probably a little bit safer to just buy a new one. And 
a new one is yet to be fitted. So is my six-month classic car project that I bought in January still a runner? Well, that's yet to be answered, and it's in the hands of Alan the Mechanic. Merry Christmas, everyone. So here